Hey guys, Drifter here. Today I've got some Apex Legends gameplay for you and I wanted to talk a lot about loot boxes because today was a crazy day in what I'm going to start referring to as the loot box wars. Not only is the United States, European Union, and China considering legislative action or changes or regulatory changes around how gaming companies do loot boxes, but the United Kingdom, soon to no longer be part of the EU whenever they finally decide to Brexit, is planning to do so as well. It's kind of becoming a global problem and while no country has really put their foot down yet, you can tell that uh, the rumblings have begun and people are thinking about it. The UK Parliament held a small council meeting today to talk about loot boxes with representatives from several gaming companies. Several gaming companies showed up. It was sort of a less than formal question and answer session. And boy, <laughs> the focus of the meeting was on child gambling and corporate responsibilities when this absolutely amazing exchange happened with an EA representative. Can I ask you, both companies, do you consider loot boxes to be a, an, an ethical feature of your games? Kerry? Well, first, we don't call them loot boxes. I think that was... Whatever a, term but, you wish to apply yeah, to them, so, do so, you consider them ethical? So, what we look at as as surprise mechanics. No. Um, right. But I think it's important to look at this. So uh, if, yeah. if you go to, if you go to a, uh, I don't know what your version of Target is, but a, a store that sells a lot of toys, and you do a search for surprise toys, what you'll find is that this is something people enjoy. They enjoy surprises. And so it's, it's something that's been part of toys for years, whether it's Kinder Eggs or Hatchimals or LOL Surprise. Um, we do think the way that we have implemented these kind of mechanics, and, and FIFA, of course, is our big one, our FIFA Ultimate Team and our packs, is actually quite ethical and quite fun, enjoyable to people. Um, we agree with the UK Gambling Commission, the Australian Gambling Commission, and many other gambling commissions that they aren't gambling. And we also disagree that there's evidence that shows it leads to gambling. Instead, we think it's like many other products that people enjoy in a very healthy way uh, and like the element of surprise. Whoa. Um... Yeah, that's 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 what EA had to say about their loot boxes, and it's easy to criticize EA, but I think that most other gaming companies have very similar outlooks. And we can all sit here on the internet and, and easily make fun of this woman for shilling and lying and just generally behaving unethically, but this is the perfect example to highlight the disconnect between gaming publishers and gamers and in a broader sense, corporate leaders and the rest of society. But first, I've got a little bit of shilling of my own to do. This is PC gameplay. All of the gameplay you see captured here, all of the webcam, the editing, everything is powered by an Origin PC. I'm sponsored by Origin. I've loved them forever. My PC has been amazing. And if you want a beast rig, you can check out the link down there below in the description to go ahead and get your own. But back on topic with no more shilling for the rest of this episode. Calling these loot boxes surprise mechanics is ridiculous on just about every level. And saying that they're ethical and comfortable, I mean, surprise mechanics would mean something mechanical or interesting that happens in a game, something that you do because in this uh, context of this conversation, we're probably trying to talk about game mechanics, right? Well, grapple hooking things as Pathfinder and Apex Legends and flying around the map is a mechanic. You know, using your paraglider suit and blackout to zip around is a mechanic. Mr. Game & Watch having a guaranteed 9 that hits people, albeit randomly in Super Smash Brothers, is a game mechanic. But just sitting there and hitting X to open a box randomly and just waiting to be rewarded is not a game mechanic unless maybe it's more like a mechanical slot machine. I mean, if you game mechanics, mechanical slot machine, kinda do some galaxy brain, maybe you can justify it. But it's a very, very stupid thing to say. And the Kinder Egg and other you know, surprise toy analogy is also exceptionally poor. When it comes to the Kinder Eggs and the surprise toys and the little mystery toys, you can keep the items forever. You get a physical item that you can keep. You can sell them, you can trade them, you can get them at used shops, you can do a lot of different stuff with them, and such is not the case of most microtransaction goods. Most microtransaction goods you sort of have permission to use as long as you can play that game with the publisher's permission and just so long as you uh, continue playing it. You know, in a couple of years when you're done playing the game, you can't sell these items and cash out. That's not an option. On top of that, in most cases, you also don't have to buy an expensive starter pack 
to start the random item games. To me, lying like this is actually offensive. And this is coming from a guy who gets a lot of crap online. I have been called and accused of just about everything under the sun. So even though I still occasionally get upset about things, I have pretty thick skin. It takes a lot to get to me. But when a company just blatantly lies this hard to justify screwing over their loyal customers and has employees embracing this lie to the point where they supposedly feel comfortable talking about it in front of representatives of one of the most powerful governments in the world, I feel offended. I feel like I've just been told that I am worthless, that I have no value in this world, and that everything that I enjoy and love, being video games, it just is it only exists to serve the purpose of my corporate overlords that only want me to give them more money. If I'm not throwing money at you hand over fist, I have no value as a human being and I shouldn't even exist, and that the purpose of my life is to buy more loot boxes. That kind of thing, that kind of disrespect for, I don't know, the human condition, for lack of a better word, is something that actually pisses me off and I hate to hear it. I get just as mad when I hear about all the lovely benefits of clean coal and how amazing fracking is for the environment and like homeopathy and crap like this. It gets me really, really upset. But back on topic. Today, I wanted to briefly talk about why smart, well-educated, and otherwise reasonable people would say such outrageous things. And I mean, you know, the obvious answer here is money. She got paid a lot of money by EA to represent the company in, in this meeting. And yeah, it's money, but there's also something else that's prevalent in every single corporation, and that's what's called the agency problem. You can Google this on your own, but I'm gonna very briefly read the definition. It usually refers to a conflict of interest between a company's management and a company's stockholders. The manager, acting as an agent for the shareholders or principals, is supposed to make decisions that will maximize shareholder wealth, even though it is in the manager's best interest to maximize his own wealth. Or basically, since the person doesn't have any incentives for performance, they can just run the company however that benefits them instead of benefiting that for the shareholders. But the agency problem also extends to the conflict between the company and the shareholders and the shareholders and the environment because there's a conflict that exists between shareholders and the rest of society because no business is perfect. Every single business that has ever existed in the history of ever has sourced something from the environment or some labor from people or capitalized or made took, taken advantage of something clever that nobody else knew existed. And almost every company cuts corners to turn profits. The side effects of this are called externalities or external problems to the company or external events. Most most economic schools will tell you that you know externalities are acceptable if they don't hurt anybody, but if they do hurt anybody, the government and society will push back and they'll be paid for and restituted, and that smart companies account for this, and that you know uh, you know externalities take care of themselves. I don't really believe this is true, especially not in our modern world of giant multinational corporations and kind of barren capitalism and government support. It, it can get kind of crazy and sometimes the way that a company makes money is off the backs of everybody in society like gaming publishers tricking people into buying a game at a fixed price and then charging more 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 every month and changing the system all the time to squeeze out more microtransaction money now that that's a newer example the more common example of the agency problem and externalities would include pollution you know if somebody pollutes a river and the townspeople get sick that's an externality that the company has to pay for and deal with. There's lobbying for government subsidies, like how some private sporting teams get subsidies to build giant stadiums and cities and that just increases their profits. Or lobbying for government regulation against another business creating unethical monopolies, etc, etc, etc. And a not so common, or at least not as noticeable one happens in the gaming industry in terms of pricing and loot boxes, which brings us back around to our loot boxes and video games discussion. Loot boxes make money. They make gobs of money. They make money hand over fist, and it is the most profitable sector of any game on the market. Any game that is made that has loot boxes, loot boxes were the reason that game is made now. Game companies are not making their profit back on the fixed prices, and they make all that money on the loot boxes. As a gamer, this hits us like an additional tax on our purchase because we gotta pay that tax to get the whole benefit of the game or else we get a partial product. So when gamers want to push back and ask for changes and get loud and angry and you know make YouTube videos like I'm doing and post on the internet, 
it doesn't really matter because we aren't the voices that the company has to listen to. As a company, like EA for example, you only have to listen to the voices of your shareholders. Whatever your shareholders desire, that is what the company cares about because big companies like to project outward strength. The CEOs like to posture themselves as powerful, as leaders of men, like brave generals, and that we, we are Apple, we are infallible, we are huge, we are Google, you cannot touch us. But the reality is that every executive and every employee at every corporation is subject to firing at any moment upon the request of the majority of the shareholders. That nameless, faceless mob of thousands of people who own stock in a company can kick out any employee that they want to. So every CEO, every VP, every employee, every decision along the way has to be subject to the shareholders' demands. And the shareholders only demand one thing, more money. That's all they want, and all they want is more money. So all the company has to do is provide them with more money to stay in existence. Either the stock price has to go up, or the dividends have to go up, one or the other. They have to get their return on investment. And a group of people, a group of shareholders that big, doesn't have a conscious or a will or an ethical responsibility. If you think about just grabbing like a thousand random people from any major city in the US, you'll have people of every ethnicity, every religion, every size and shape and gender, every uh, type of psychographic. You'll have angry people, happy people, hippies. You'll have people that are into foot fetishes. You'll have people that like to garden and you'll have all this this crazy hodgepodge of people, but the only one value that they'll have in common, and some of this is human biology and some of it is just the nature of investors, is that they are greedy. Human beings are greedy and they want money. So the only singular demand that this group can ever demand of a company is more money and to punish people that lose money. The same story is true not just of EA, but just about every single large public corporation out there. And that is why businesses act so unethically, like saying that loot boxes are surprise mechanics. The businesses just have an unethical purpose, which is to make money. They are bound to an unethical group because shareholders are legally shielded from any sort of responsibility of what the company does. The executives may not be, but as a shareholder of some company, it's just not my fault if the company pollutes the environment or kills people or whatever. It doesn't have any effect on me. And that's why people at EA go to such lengths to justify loot boxes and come back with stupid phrases like surprise mechanics. They're just bound by the desires of a faceless immoral mob that only desires increased profit that's it that's that's it's the nature of our modern world and to me I, I know I probably sound like a little communist over here but this type of problem is something that bothers me that corporations have no ethical responsibility whatsoever to greater society and only serve to make money and at the scale they exist at in the modern world you have really really crazy things and in the case of loot boxes, I think that actually nothing will happen without government action. I don't think that people are going to stop buying video games, stop buying entertainment, and, you know, boycott or lobby or rebel or whatever. It's just not, that's not how human greed and economics and entertainment works. The, the loot box war on the customer side is pretty much lost. Uh, if, with, if the government steps in and lays down regulation, that might change. And what scares me is that people are just now starting to grow up with loot boxes. There are people that have started early high school and they've graduated and now they're adults and they've had loot boxes the whole time. Children are growing up with their entertainment being apps that sell loot boxes. And God, you can buy product loot boxes online. A lot of crummy YouTubers, like I remember Rice Gum and his shoes and shirt and like Jake Paul, they would open up these like swag boxes and everybody's trying to get Louis Vuitton stuff. These kind of people, are beginning to think that loot box purchases are normal, that gambling type purchases are normal and acceptable and that it's okay for any and every business to do and they just don't understand the concept of what my dinosaur generation, which I don't even think I'm that old, grew up with of you get what you pay for. And I think if something isn't changed in the next 10 or 15 years, that other businesses are going to start adopting this model too. You're going to have grocery loot boxes, Walmart loot boxes, gasoline loot boxes, electricity bill loot boxes, and everything's going to be run through apps and little loot boxes with little rewards. And it's just sort of like a, a crazy Black Mirror-esque episode where everything's a gamble and that terrifies me. So I really hope that the government steps up and does something about loot boxes because I'm sick of paying for them. Guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you learned something useful through all of this rambling. And if you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.
to loot <laughs> no he doesn't i am in the matrix i am keanu reeves i am breathtaking <laughs> oh my god 